Hi guys, Judy here. I hope you're having a great day. I'm walking my dog. I'm back in California. South Carolina was amazing. Marianne was amazing. All the people we prayed for and loved on were amazing. The ocean. Ah, oh, the warm ocean. Body and boogie boarding, surfing was amazing. The shark was amazing, yes. We didn't actually see it, but someone did <laughs> and told us to get out of the water. And we did. We went to a different part of the water. Um, the do Her dog was amazing, Casper. Caspi, my big orca I swam with. And God is good. Today I want to talk about what qualifies you. See, the kingdom of God is the opposite of this world. Okay? So, we glory in our weaknesses. Okay? Because... That's where we become strong. And a lot of people think they're disqualified from a lot of things in God's kingdom because of their failures. But God says no. That's what qualifies you. Oh, I'm going to get a lot of people criticizing me for this message because whenever I give these types of radical grace messages that the Lord that the Lord gives me to give you, I get all the religious hypocrites wound up and I if I don't then I worry because you know they're my sign from God that it's right on track <laughs> okay God says your weaknesses your failures have is what has qualified you number one to be a bride number two to work in his kingdom for him and with him and through him and minister to him Jesus became perfect for us. What he did on the cross took up every failure we had. There's a lot of people that have been walking in the Lord for years and have felt a call in their life of the Lord to go up a little deeper, to express him a little more to the world, but they've been stifled because of what they think are things that have disqualified them. And God wants me to tell you today that it's quite the opposite of what you're thinking. Son, daughter, those things are what has qualified you to speak for me, to work for me, to minister to my heart. You know, sometimes people that love God follow the world standards of what success is of what qualifications are. I get caught up in it too sometimes, you know? Being a teacher, perform, 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 trying to get your students... Marty, come! Marty! Trying to get your students and, you know, up to par, up to performance standards, up to passing this, passing that. You know, when this veil is lifted and we see him and we go to the other side, the kingdom of heaven and then the new earth, these standards are going to be much different it's not going to be as nauseating as the standards here. We weren't really created for these standards. I'm not saying performance isn't good, okay? But what I am saying, it's distorted. That overemphasis on performance has distorted and made people feel, you know, people that aren't inclined to the world standards like test taking and different things and, and just everything, you know? Um, in this world that have shrunk back because they aren't quote unquote qualified. They couldn't pass a test or not even that. Even just, you know, they failed here, they failed there, therefore they can't. And you know, these are things that God wants to talk to you today about. In Revelation, hello. <laughs> In Revelation, he wants to give. So, years ago so basically what I like to do is I like to give examples through my life because that's what God tells me to do he tells me to be transparent Rawr, look at my shadow Rawr. Um, and years ago I had a quote-unquote perfect life in the world's eyes you know and a lot of respect a lot of adoration and that's not a bad thing 
it's not a bad thing if you if you walk in that. But it is a bad thing if you think that's what qualifies you to be in God's kingdom, to work in God's kingdom, and to receive love from God and acceptance. Our worldly parents sometimes make that mistake of, not every parent, but make that mistake of judging their child based on, you know, trying to get their child to perform. And, and you should, you should push your kids and push them into their destiny and help them. But at the same time, you have to stop and just say, God, what are you saying? You know, and encourage your kids to say, to do what God is telling them to do. Jesus worked quietly as a carpenter for 30 years, but if you were to tell your kid to be a carpenter, oh no, don't be a carpenter. Go to college, go do this, go do that. See, we're just, it's just ingrained in us to live a certain way rather than living the way that God truly tells you to live. The world's opposed to it. Your own family is opposed to it. It's just, if God told you to sit on your butt for five years out of high school, you know, nobody would be proud of you, okay, except God, because you obeyed him. Oh, sorry, sorry. Marty, come. He's nice. <laughs> and, um, so I am pulling a witchy, a Richie from Boston. I digress. <laughs> no, actually, I haven't digressed. I just got interrupted because of more doggies. Um, okay, but that does not, see what I'm saying? That's not prized in the world's eyes. You're doing what? You're sitting for five years and you're just learning to hear God and you're gonna work at Taco Bell? Really? Okay. Are you sure? Because that doesn't look very good. You see what I'm saying about these world standards? For everybody. And um, so I just, those are just some, some little samples. Now I wanna tell you what God's done for me. Um, when I, my baby and I and my husband were traveling and preaching and taking teens with us all over the world and seeing God heal sick people and preach and love and give words, hello, yeah. Hi. and give words and stuff, um, you know, I had the package that looked perfect. It was a blessing. I walked with the Lord. I served him good. We were blessed. Okay. But that little perfect package got smashed because of, you know, human incompetencies and weaknesses and failures. And that's okay. God allows those things to hit our life. One divorce later, then two divorces later, I'm sitting in my car going, Lord, how did we get here? You know? And I'll never forget, because I, I felt like such a failure, like, hold on. <laughs> You know, how did this happen? And he said, yeah, you're broken to the point where I can finally trust you. Now you're qualified to go heal my people, go minister to my people. And I just, it was the opposite of what the world would say. It still makes me cry when I think about it. I was sitting in my car, baby in the back seat, you know, under five, still calling my baby and he's 13, but you know how that goes. But, and that's what he said, oh no, no, this is what has qualified you. I'm like, what? You know, <laughs> really? <laughs> he said, yeah, I can trust you now. You're not going to hurt anyone. You've been hurt in every way and you won't hurt anyone. You guys, that's just my personal example, but put, put in your own life, put in your own, what you consider to be things that were failures and you fill in the ga gaps. Okay. I'm just sharing from my life because I'm trying to tell you to, you know, not just tell you something that the Lord's saying, but to also give you examples, okay? And I open up my life here, and, um, and I become open because I want to see in honest so that it'll help somebody, you know? And, um, many of you have seen my face. I just can't show my face on the videos and God told me that so that's why I do that but some of you I we share pictures and stuff and I see you face to face when I travel anyway my point is this you guys this is so important the Lord woke me up today and he's telling me a lot of you are settling 
for, you're not selling for his highest call because you feel like you failed. Okay, I'm not talking to everybody in this video, but I'm talking to somebody and you'll know who it is. Please change your mindset. Your failures, your inadequacies, your weaknesses has what has made you qualified. Yeah, and you can even glory in them. You know, I glory in my weaknesses. You can even glory in them. So, you know, what the world says qualifies you for this and that. God says, oh no, <laughs> my standards are different. Are you going to keep looking at the world standards? You know, so I just want to encourage you guys, up until the Lord gets here, the most important thing is intimacy with him and, and being strong in your love walk, receiving his love, and then letting it fill you to overflowing and then letting it spill on to a lost and dying world. But that could take you up until he gets here just to get to that point, okay? Because this love thing is huge. He wants you to marinate in it. He wants you to walk. Jesus sat in it for 30 years before he opened his mouth. But at the same time, we're at the end of time here. This is why this walk, you can't ask me. You know, you have to ask God. People can come along like me and give you prophetic words and confirm things and things like that. But God, you know, there's no broad brush. That's why these Christian books drive me crazy. Because it's like, that was what happened in your life and it's an inspiring story. But don't tell me to apply that standard to my life. You know, God told me to throw away all the books years ago. Every book on everything. On parent raising the godly way. On Christian, he just said, stop. You're, I'm writing my own book through you. Okay? Stop. Because what... You know, and, and we tend to do that as people. We tend, to, we tend to look outside instead of inside. What is God doing with me? We look at someone else to be inspired. And that's okay to an extent. Okay, but many people are missing the highest call on God's life because they're still looking at things from another point of view and not God's point of view. And I'm going to encourage you in this last hour, you guys. Look through the Lord's eyes. And how do you get that? By spending time with Him. By being intimate with Him. By letting Him. By marinating in His love. By just talking with Him all the time. You will know where you're supposed to go. Some of you He's called to get up. And go heal the sick. And go preach and minister. Some of you He said, no, you're going to sit here with me. And if I, if I want to do that, I'll do that with you. But right now, sit with me. Sit with me. Know me. Understand my ways. Let me talk to you. You know, and um, give it all up for his appearing, you guys. In this last hour, continue to give it all up for his appearing. Give it all up. Some of you, though, your weaknesses have qualified you. And God says, get up off your bed and go. Go. Go minister to a lost and dying world. Go do it. And some of you will. And I release you into your destiny today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, through me, the Lord, in this prayer, the Lord releases you into the fullness of his calling in your life. That has been stifled and God says you will walk and you will you will do because I've, I'm in you and greater is he that is in me than you that are in the world greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world walk in it walk in it get up and go some of you he's saying don't get up and go lay down and learn lay down and marinate lay down and listen and sometimes he says get up now lay down get up now lay down you know that's why it's just you have to be with him you have to be with him, bride. You must be with him. Get your marching orders from him. People will come along and God will use them to confirm that you're on the right path here and there when you need it. But you can't go get your marching orders from someone. You get them from dad. I love you.